All right, my boy Anthony just pulled up in a matching chrome gold IRA, absolutely killing it. He's one of the, probably one of the fastest growing fitness entrepreneurs on Instagram. Um, literally went from dead broke to over seven figures in less than a year, um, literally helping girls get those cakes. So we're gonna kill this podcast for you guys. Uh, you ready, bro? Let's go. Let's go. All right, yo, 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 what up, Dropout Degree Nation? Thank you for tuning into the podcast. If this is your first time here, my name is Jet Set Fly, and this podcast is hosted by me and my co-host, usually Bunt. He's not here at the moment, but we talk about all the different entrepreneurial things, you know, how to make money, how people build businesses and build brands in today's age. You know, you see a lot of things, you know, the traditional school system, and it's not necessarily relevant today. If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to make money, you want to get to that next level. So today we have a special, special person on here, somebody that's built a massive, massive brand, a really, probably one of the fastest growing um, brands on Instagram and on social media when it comes to a specific niche. And in terms of actually creating profit, not just you know getting a lot of followers, actually making a lot of money. And uh, he's just absolutely killing it. He has a gold card, looks like just like mine. He's, Crazy, crazy looking thing. Um, I got my man, the man, the myth, the legend, King Anthony Fitness, otherwise known as the Booty King. And uh, all you guys that are tuning in right now, don't think that we're gonna be talking about just booties. We're gonna be talking about how he blew up his brand, how he's making a ton of money, and uh, you know how how you can do that too. So, uh, like I said, we got him here right now. Anthony, tell them a little bit about yourself for people who don't really know you. Um, you know, like where you're from, what's kind of your backstory. I know we met we met a few times, but you know, I still don't really know you that much. So, what's kind of your whole spill? All right, so for the people that don't know me, um, pretty much, so I grew up in Anaheim. You know, it was uh, in the really, like, ghetto part of Anaheim. I know a lot right. of people, when they think of Anaheim, they think of, like, Disneyland, like, yeah, but yeah, they, yeah. what they don't know is that Anaheim's, like, it's really, like, ghetto. Right. But it's just that Disneyland doesn't let any any of that go out, you know? Okay. Um, the place I grew up at, it was, like, there was a lot of gangs around there. You know, um, I, hung out, I hung out around them, like, when I was growing up, but I kind of went my own path right and, and real quick why, not to cut you off but so when you say like you hung out with like gangs and stuff like that yeah that because like they were like hanging around like your school or they yeah just, like, i mean like they were yeah neighborhood like so they're just kind of like influencing you or yeah like it that's all there was around my neighborhood right okay. um we were poor i had like we had like 20 family members living in one house oh, shit. yeah I, I grew up in my i pretty much lived in my parents living room mm-hmm. until i was 20 24 okay so pretty much um, skip all that stuff. Um, when I was like around 18, 19, I was doing a lot of weed, smoking a lot of, um, yeah, pretty much smoking a lot of weed, doing a lot of drugs. Right. And there was a point where I was just like, fuck, what am I going to do with my life? You know? Right. And I remember um, right when I turned 20, I started working out. Right. And I, it was something I really enjoyed doing. It, um, and I was still stretching out like, damn, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? Like, right. I'm not going to school anymore. So did, did you go to college or... I went to community college for, like, a year, but mm-hmm. when I was there, I was only taking, like, bullshit classes, like, swimming, <laughs> and, like, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? So, yeah. I just got out, and it was, um, so I started getting to fitness, and you know, I was like, you know what, what don't, why don't I just become a trainer? Right. And so, I, I um, signed up for school for a year of tr- um, school. It was just, like, a school where it was just for training. Okay, specifically for fitness? Yeah. So, did, real quick, did any of your parents go to school, or... Like, um, okay, so... Like what's your, like, family, like, background? What's uh, that whole spill? Okay, so my dad, they didn't go to um, school in Mexico. Like, my dad went to school till he was in, um, 11 years old. Okay. So your parents are from Mexico? Yeah. So you're full Mexican? I'm full Mexican. Okay. But back then, like, in Mexico, like, they, they were really poor. They needed to help their family. So they started working at an early age. Right. Um, my dad, when he was already, like, 11 years old, he stopped going to school. He just started working in the fields. Mm-hmm. My mom was the same way. She need she needed to help her mom, her little sisters. When she was like fourteen years old, she started cooking, doing all that stuff. She, right. she didn't really go to school. Right. Um, and then my dad, well, my oldest sister was born, so my dad came to the um, United States by himself. He, mm-hmm. he he didn't bring his uh, my mom and my sister with him. He started saving money. He started sending money to my mom. Right. And eventually flew him out. Okay. So, me like growing up, I didn't have like any like direction you know yeah. like their their plan for me was like all right you're 
construction, you're you're gonna make good money doing yeah. that. Like it wasn't even the regular traditional. Yeah. Thing. Like most people have that traditional story. Like their parents, are like go to school, get good grades, go to college, get better grades, yeah. you know, land a high paying job after you graduate. Yeah. And you didn't. You didn't even have that direction. Like for so me, like, like when I when I graduated high school, like that was like an accomplish, accomplishment because right. they didn't even go to school. Right. You know, and I didn't have, like, no direction, like, fuck, like, how do I make money? Right. I thought the only way to make money was, like, if you became a doctor, mm-hmm. you know, you own the business. Right. So, um, so yeah, like, when I started getting to fitness, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start doing training. So, a year passes by, two years passed by, and I, I start, I became a trainer. I was um, 24. Okay. And I moved in with my sister. One of my, I have four sisters. Okay. Um, one of them, she had a garage. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use her garage to train people. Okay. And I, yeah, so I was 24. And I, I, was, I, was, um, I got a couple clients. And I transformed them. Right. And I was like, damn, I could transform people in my garage. Like, I'm good. Because nobody, nobody even wants to work out. So they have to go to a garage where it's yeah. fucking hot. Yeah. And I could keep them motivated and transform them. Like, right. I just knew I was good. But for three years, I was doing the same thing, transforming people, but I wasn't, like, getting rewarded. Like, I wasn't making enough money. Right, because you're just trading your time for money. Yeah. You're just training them in person. Yeah, so I was like, fuck, like, I'm good. I know I'm good, but, like, I can't be doing this for the rest of my life. Right, and real quick, what do you think, you know, because a lot of people that get trainers, a lot of people that go to the gym and they never see results. Why do you think your clients, the people you were working with, were you know, getting results so fast that compared, like, a lot of other people? You know, something I really do that I see a lot of trainers that they don't do is um, I get into my clients. Like, I train them mentally. Okay. You know, because um, a lot of people, they think that it's just, oh, oh I'm going to start working out. I'm going to get results. That's just a physical thing. But it's not. It's kind of like now I, I apply the same methods to business. Like, it's not going to be quick. Right. You know, you have to be patient and you have to be consistent. And there's going to be a lot of days where you don't feel like doing anything. But right. you got to push yourself on those days. You know, to right. build a business, you got to do – you got to do a lot of things every day that you don't want to do. Right. And right. that's the same thing with working out. You got to do things on days you don't feel like it. Because there's more days where you don't feel like doing anything. Than when you do. Yeah. So if you only do things on days you feel like it, yeah. you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, right, right. So, like, I was pretty good at just training them mentally. Like, and I still apply the same things. Like, everybody I have in, that I had in um, in-person client, I still do the same things, like, to the people I, that follow me on Instagram. Okay. Like, I do stories where I tell them, like, things that I would tell my um, in-person clients. Right, right. But let me get back to the point where I was talking about um, I, three years passed by where I was training people in my garage. And I was about to quit because I was like, damn, I'm good, but, like, I'm not making enough money. So right. I was legit thinking of quitting. But the thing that kept me from doing that was that I knew I was good. And I just needed to find new ways to expose myself to the world. Right. So every time something failed, I was like, I was, I stayed optimistic because I knew I was good. I'm like, okay, this didn't work, but for sure this is going to work. All right, this didn't work, for sure this is going to work. Okay. And I stuck with that for three and a half years. Um, and then I was, training, I was still training people in my garage, so I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to start, I'm going to join a private gym and train people there at mm-hmm. first my my thought was like okay why would i spend 900 dollars a month to train people at a gym when i could just train them in my garage for free so the, the gyms they charge like trainers like a fee yeah okay private gyms they charge they charge you to train your clients you could train as many people as you want oh, okay makes sense so once i um so i i started going to this gym called self-made training facility it's a private gym okay i'm familiar with that yeah and um so this was this past september like and, last year? Yeah, last year, September. Like one year ago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this was past, um this past September, I um I joined that gym and then I was like just grinding and like trying to find um ways to get more clients because mm. the way I saw it was like all right if I could train like if I could have thirty clients I could make I could be making like nine k if I get fifty clients I could be making twelve k right so I was grinding trying to get my clients but at the same time. I was still trying to build my social media game up. Okay. So it was a lot of work. So when did you decide to hop on social media and because you, like, and why? What, what was that? When did you decide to hop on social media and like start posting like you know, oh, stuff? Oh, I was doing that since I started. But oh, since you were in a garage? Yeah. Okay. And um, so I was really good with like recording. It was something that I was doing all the time. So yeah, when I really consistent with it. So when I joined the gym, it's funny because when I joined the gym, I was still doing that. I was yeah. I, got, I grabbed the camera and I would talk and then like instruct the 
a workout. Right. And all the trainers around me are like, what the fuck is this fool <laughs> doing? Like, they've never seen that before. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know how other trainers trained because I was always in my garage. Right. And um, so, yeah, so, like, what happens is, um, so, September goes by, and I always knew about Facebook ads mm -hmm. and Instagram ads, but I didn't really know how to work them. Right. So, I remember I did an ad, and it didn't really work. But then September, um, October comes, and I already had an ebook. It's a booty workout program. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to do it. I did an ad that teaches people what booty workouts work better than squats. Because something that all women think is that squats are the best booty building yeah. exercise. That's like, but that's what I heard my entire yeah. life. Like, squat, 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 so squat, squat. So <laughs> I do an ad that explains workouts that work the butt a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing that. And it started you selling anything in the ad? Or was it just like a free no, ad? No, it was just was it? like an ad that brought value. Okay. And um, so I put that ad out there. And I noticed that I was getting a lot more followers and, like, people hitting me up for a booty program. Right. And I didn't have a website. I had the booty program, but I didn't have a website. How, how were you selling it? Um, okay, so what I, what I was doing, I had a PayPal account. Yeah. You just, you just email <laughs> and I was just like, all right. So I would email them the link with, like, how much it was. Right. 50 bucks. And I sent them, like, all the details about it. And then if they des decided to buy it, they would, like, just click the PayPal account and send me money and then I was doing all this manually. Wow. So Sounds like a lot of work for yeah, sure. Yeah, so like um so November comes and I had never made anything more than six thousand dollars a month like all three years that I was training. Right. And then November comes and like I fucking go from six thousand to seventeen thousand in November. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh fuck, I got something going on here. <laughs> and I was still doing everything manu manually. So yeah. people were buying my program, but I was so other than just training, I was at home all day just sending out these programs to everyone. Right. Sending out pe people were hitting me up for um details. So I was sending out details. Like it was a lot of work. A lot of manual work. All by yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, December's coming up. Like I don't expect a huge month because usually when it comes to um fitness, nobody really decides to work out in December. They're like, oh, I'm going to start January. Yeah, right. December comes, and I hit 12K, and I'm like, oh, damn, like, that's pretty good. Yeah, right. So I, in my head, I'm thinking, like, I, I know where, I see where this is going. If I just keep doing what I'm doing, yeah. transforming people, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit, like, 30K sometime next year. Right. And January comes, I hit 30K, and I'm Everybody's like, oh. on the New Year's resolutions. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm like, this is crazy. So yeah. it was a lot of work. I'm like, I need to get a website, though. Right. So uh, I took too long doing the website, but I was, my business was growing every month, like yeah, scaling. Yeah, exponentially. Yeah, and it doubled. And I'm like, fuck, I need a website. So when, um, I got a website in May. Wow, this year. And so. You literally went from like rags to straight riches. Yeah. Like overnight. So, <laughs> so all, I remember my fourth year of training, I hit, like, I only made 55,000. Right. Fucking in first month i i um, launched my website i hit fucking six figures wow and like this year i already made seven figures so yeah. I, I went from fucking five figures um five figures to seven figures in one year that's nuts yeah but at the same time though like you did so like a lot of people look at that and they're like dude like you got lucky you got rich yeah nine. but like, that's not possible for most people but then like you said you've been filming and transforming people yeah. and putting in work and like you know learning that for like three four years so, like, when you first started working at Self Made, how many followers have you built on uh, Instagram, like, from just doing garage workouts? Okay, so, well, the thing is that that's, um, I was training in my garage, but I wasn't recording in my garage. Oh, okay. So what, what I was doing, doing was, what I was doing was, um, so I would train all day in my garage. Because mm -hmm. when you train, like, just say you have 10 clients, it's not, like, 10 straight hours. Right. It's, like, all day because you could have, like, an hour or two-hour gap in between cl clients. Right. So, what I was doing was I was waiting for the weekend to come by. Mm -hmm. And I would, like, get one of my good-looking clients, and I'd be like, hey, let's go to 24-Hour Fitness so I could record you. But it would have to be late at night because so they don't there. let you record at a 24-Hour at Fitness. Okay. And so I was spending my weekends just doing content. Right, like, content. I legit didn't go out. Yeah. I was just trying to build my business. And it was hard because you're, like, you're putting in so much work, and, like, you're not getting anything in return. Yeah. So right. you're just like, damn, like, is it worth it? And that, that's why most people have to, like, give up. Yeah. Like, they, you know, they, they're trying, they're trying, they're doing the same things. They're seeing, like, a little bit of growth, but not what they're expecting. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like, and one of the things, too, I feel like, is people see, like, people like you, you know, because when I first found your page, I think you only had, like, 200,000 followers. Yeah. That shit's doubled since then, you know? <laughs> and they see, like, you know, people like myself, they see the current results, they see the cars, they see the lifestyle, they see, like, the, you know, the 
idolize success that people give us, but they don't like see everything like that we went through before. Yeah. And they don't see all the different times that we're like, uh, no, nah, this is not it. Let me try something else. Or I'm not sure if I should do this. Let me try something else. And so I think they have a false expectation of like what the actual reality is. Cause our actual reality was you did this for three or four years. Yeah. Like it didn't just happen. Like, in one year where it was like, oh, shit, I'm going to start doing this, and it's gonna, yeah. I'm going to make but money like, in a year. You're following, and people in the same space, they only see that last year. Mm-hmm. And when they hear the story, they only you know, hear that last story of going from you know, f- uh, four figures to you know, six, seven figures. So that, like, they don't see all that, right? And so they think that you know, if they're not getting that results like that you got in one year, like, maybe it's not for me. Maybe I shouldn't like, pursue it. When in reality, it's, like, it's not really one year. It is, but it's like those other three years yeah. built that one year. Where you were just you know? grinding. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I, I can relate too, dude. Because um, especially I can relate a lot to your story. Because my first like thing, like really making money, like on my own, was actually training too. But I was training like like athletes at my school, and I was like I had an old beat up 2002 Tundra, and I would throw weights from a garage in the back, and I would, like go pick up like these kids at my school that wanted to like you know like sophomores that wanted to play varsity, and I would like go train them for like ten bucks an hour or an hour and a half, and I was doing that for a while. And I also started doing stuff on social media, actually build a brand as well. And I just didn't stick with it because I ended up finding like, you know, business and like internet marketing. But it's, so I can like 100% relate to your story. And I was like filming stuff and putting out content. And everyone's like, like, what is he doing? Yeah. Like, why, why is he filming himself? Or does he think he's so cool? Or like, why would he put that on Instagram? Like Instagram's for friends, you know what I yeah. mean? So it's kind of it's kind of crazy hearing that. And then you're actually running full force with it. But so what made you like go like the, the specific niche? Because obviously right now oh, okay. you call yourself, you're the fucking booty <laughs> king. And I, I be seeing the results you be posting, bro. Like I see literally girls go from having yeah. a flat butt to having, you know, cakes <laughs> in a couple months. So what, what made you decide to pursue that specific niche instead of just all around training because I see a lot of big trainers you know a million followers two million followers three million followers and they're shredded as hell you know they look like you know freaking Olympians yeah. but they probably don't even make a fraction of what you're making right now okay so um, like it was um, last year in February when I just decided to just stick to just posting stuff about booty workouts right um, I saw a trend because like I was getting a lot of people hitting me up like hey I want to grow my butt I want to grow my butt right and as a trainer, like, you're taught to just, like, work out every muscle. And, I mean, I still do that, but I don't show any uh, workouts for upper body. Because mm-hmm. what my goal was when I started in February was, like, all right, if I want to really succeed online, I have to be an expert in one area. Right, right. Instead of, like, all these areas and confuse people. So I was like, all right, I'm going to stick to just booty and just go with it right. and see where it goes. And that way, so when people think of butts, they think of me. right. See, like, too many trainers, they try to be an expert at, like, all these diets or, like, building biceps. Right, or, right. Like, you know? Looking so at, I was like, just like, trying to separate. And stuff like that. Yeah, I was trying to separate separate myself from them. Especially in, in fitness, it's like. So many people are doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, there's so many people. So you right. got to just separate yourself from the pack. Right. And well, I was so like, what was everybody else's feedback when you started doing that? Like, what were other trainers thinking and saying? Um, or like, you know, like, what were normal people thinking? Like, oh, he's just always talking about your booty. Like, why is he doing this? You know? Well, some, I was getting a lot of people saying, like, can you post, like, upper body workouts too or, like, stuff like that. Right. And I was like, no, nah, I got to stick to this. Like, <laughs> there was a lot of people telling me do other stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, nah, I know where I, – I see the vision. Like, I had the vision of where this was going to go. Right. I'm like, I'm just going to stick to it. And, like, all girls care about now is their ass. That's like, true. I had – um. The other, like a couple months ago, I was working out with someone, and like, I um we were gonna work out our our ass, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, let's do this arm workout real quick, pull ups. Right. So I had her do pull ups, and she was like, if you ever make me do pull ups again, I'm never gonna work out with you. <laughs> like legit, like oh they don't God. even care about any other yeah, area. Yeah. It's just like they just want to grow their ass. Right. And they want to go to club. They want the, everybody looking at them. They want to post a little Instagram yeah. pictures. Yeah. So it's like it's like a whole different um, demographic now in fitness. It's like there's right. like people that want to like look super fit, and then there's just the girls that just want the ass. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what's like really helped my business grow. Like there's so many people that just want that. So that's why my business is growing every month. Right. So what do you think separates you from all these Instagram models? And Instagram, you know, fitness trainers have millions of followers that are selling, you know, their booty programs. Um, you know, why, why, why do you think girls trust, like, a male versus a female that has, like, a big, bo- a okay, big booty? Okay, so um, one of them is my results speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is that I transform, like, different type of body types. Right. Like, you know, that those girls that you mentioned, they could be, like, they could have been someone that was um, pretty fit. And then she just, like, got, like, she grew her ass. Right. 
But then there's me transforming someone that had no ass and getting her to grow an ass. Right. When other people think like, oh, it's all genetics. Like I'm here proving that, no, it could be done, you know? Right. So it's a, so pretty much it's a lot more relatable. Yeah. So, you know, because that's, I think that's what it is too. You know, you see a lot of these big Instagram models and even like, you know, the shredded trainers that, you know, big ass biceps and stuff like that. And people see that and like, they want to look like that, but they're like, they're, they're like, Oh, maybe it's not natural. Maybe the butt's fake. Maybe the, yeah. you know the tits are definitely fake. So maybe the butt is too. Or this guy, the guy, the guy is probably on steroids, and he's probably on some crazy, crazy meal plan, paying hundreds of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a month to maintain that image. And I think it's just like not relatable at all. It's a people, except for the people who somewhat kind of look like that. So if a, somebody has like low self esteem, low confidence, and never ever can even picture them looking like that, they see yours and they they see that you did that for other people. And like, holy shit, this is actually possible. Yeah, and um, what you brought up about low self-esteem, like, I, um, what I told you earlier was, like, I try to speak to those people, you know, because um, right. I transform myself. Like, I was in that position before where I had no confidence in my body. I had, like, low self-esteem. So I know how people, I kind of, like, relate to them. So I try to get them to be, like, oh, damn, this guy, like, he knows what I'm going through. Right. So I, I kind of, like, I speak to them, and I show a lot of, workouts that work right i bring so much value in my page and i think that's a big reason why my page keeps growing as well Mm -hmm. because i give so much value every day right showing them workouts how to do it and just people just like support it so what what, when was your like breakthrough like mindset wise because obviously you have like this mindset that you know like a lot of entrepreneurs they have a great mindset and that's why they're successful they're committed they have a strong belief level like what because you literally, like you said, you came from like you know the bottom of the barrel, like literally nothing. Nobody would have ever expected you to do any of this. So where was that like breakthrough, like that moment that you were like, like it just changed everything for you, and you're like, all right, I'm going with this. I'm gonna do something with my life. Um, I would have to say it was when I was um, when I was 20, and I was speaking to my cousin. He's like, dude, you gotta do something. And like, all all you're doing is living your parent your um parents house and like and he was like it was like a deep talk and where it just made me think like like fuck like because everybody goes through the, those moments where right. they're like 18 19 20 and they're not they don't have shit going on for them and you're just stretching out because you're like fuck like you feel like you need to do something right away like at 18 you need to figure out what you're gonna do right and it just happens when i started working out that's pretty much like kind of like and i stopped smoking weed mm-hmm. it kind of opened my mind to like focus a little bit more so do you think, uh, what's, what's your opinion on weed now? Do you think it slows you, slows you down? Do you think um, it's whatever? It just depends on the person. Coming from I somebody who went could, from being like a pothead to now like, you know, a fitness like guru. I think it, um, obviously you'll do better, a lot better if you don't smoke weed. Like I know it's, weed's not bad, but right. you focus a lot more and you could get shit done at a better rate than right. if you didn't smoke weed. Okay, okay. So did you ever do like... Um, you know, like read like books, like podcasts, mindset training, like, cause I, I just feel like there's like, you know, you know what you're talking about and you, th- do you think it was literally just from like experience or did you ever go through like some sort of training to like that kind of shaped you or did you have a mentor or like anything like that? Um, okay. So my, my thought was, so when I was younger and I was doing all those drugs and all that, like I would play a lot of video games mm-hmm. and I was really good. Like I remember I had, um, FIFA, I was like top 10 in like the country oh, online <laughs> and i'm just like why the fuck am i so good at this but i remember like i used to spend so much time doing it like eight hours a day right and i was and um when i started training people i kind of went away from that and i'm like how do because i'm very competitive like i grew up with my brothers and my nephews we were like all around the same age because my sisters were a lot older mm-hmm. so my nephews are around my age and we're competitive we always try to be like the best at what we do right so that's why I was good at FIFA because I just wanted to be the best. But I knew I couldn't really make a living off it. But now you could. Like yeah, people like are sports killing. Like yeah. That. But at the time you couldn't. Yeah. And when it came to training, I was like, all right, if I'm gonna do this. Like I want to be the best. Right. So that's why I would spend so much time just like find, finding different ways to market. Right. And I just put in the time, the work, and so you're paid off. honestly at the end of the day you're just you're just fucking hungry. Yeah. You just wanted it more than most people. Yeah. What What do your parents and your siblings think about what you're doing right now? Um, I mean, I don't really speak to them like much about like, like Finances, money. Yeah. Right, right. But they see that I'm like living in Newport beach on my own. I drive a nice car. So they know right. I'm doing good. Right. Yeah. That's honestly like crazy, bro. I'm like trying to like process this story. Like, how fast, like 
all this has happened so far. Yeah. What, what do you plan on like taking it like moving forward? Like, what, what's your, because obviously your life has turned out like a million percent different than you expected it to be. Oh yeah. So, because, because when I first um, became a trainer, like you don't think, oh, I'm going to be a trainer. I'm going to make millions of dollars. Right. Yeah. Like, you kind of just did it. I did it because I like fitness. So it was something I liked. And it's just like some extra money too. So I, I was, was like, like, damn. Like decent money. Yeah. It's something I like to do. So I was like, if I could make a hundred thousand a year training celebrities, like I'm good. Right. But then like all this happened, I was like, fuck, like I could make so much more. Right. So what's now, right, now that you opened up that vision and you know, like there's so much more possible, what is your, and you know, you have that mindset, like, you know, I want to be the fucking best. I'm, I'm super hungry. You just want it more than anybody else. What is your ideal vision of your brand going? And like, when do you want it to, like, to go there? Like, what do you, where do you see yourself, I guess, in the next 12 months? Um, I definitely want to just keep growing my brand. Like I want my, my following to, to be something about like, where it's all about empowering women. Mm-hmm. And eventually I want to come out with a clothing brand that it stands for that empowering women. Right. And other than that, like, there's an, I don't really have like a specific goal in money because mm-hmm. to me like I'm making so much money right now and I try to give back like I post every day on Instagram and every time I post I do giveaways money right. giveaways okay I give out fifty dollars to someone random people on on the comments right so, so I give out like a couple thousand dollars a month just yeah helping people yeah okay so like to me it's not really about like the money it's mm-hmm. more like I just pretty much to what got me to do what I'm doing is to help people right that's that's the for, that's the reason why. I did what I'm doing. Became right. a trainer to help people better themselves. So it's just like what, like now enlarging your vision on just the biggest scale as possible. Yeah, just try to affect as many people as I can. Okay. Yeah. So now that you're you know building your business and you're having the success, how has your actual like day to day life changed? Like, have you traveled? Have you, have you went out? Like, what like what have you done okay. differently that you wouldn't have done before? Okay, so now that I um I'm able to like travel more, like I do a lot of giveaways where I'll if someone wins and they I'll fly to them to train okay. them for a couple of days. Or recently, I'm I'm flying some um, two girls out from Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, this girl she won a contest I had where I was gonna fly them out from wherever they lived. Right. And she's I'm t- I told her to bring her friend with her. They're gonna get here this weekend. Okay. So I'm doing things like that, like still like. Just, you know, just, just like, helping people out. Yeah, that's cool. So, how have you spoiled yourself? Have you spoiled yourself, anyways? Um, I'm I'm not like really like materialistic, so mm. like I don't really buy a lot of like fancy shit. But right. the the most I did was like, I um the Audi R8, the R8. Chrome wrap on it. Right, like right. that's pretty much it. That's cool. Have you always been into cars, or, or are you just like I mean hey, I, I can afford it now? I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> I, I ever ever since I saw the Audi R8, I was like, damn, I gotta make that car mine one day. Right. But I'm not really like. Two into cars, like I don't really know much about them. Right, you're just like I just I like that car. Yeah, that's fucking crazy, bro. Um, so what about in terms of like actual? Because I know you're talking about earlier, like celebrity status. Um, you know, do you have any plans mm. on like training celebrities, uh, training you know big influencers, turn it into like a show, like you know, in that type of aspect? So um, something I plan on doing is like um, getting some some huge makeup artist. Right. Um, and like networking with them where I document them, I document the whole process of me transforming them. Okay. And I'm, just, cause I'm trying to, I'm still trying to scale my brands, get more people to know about me. So if I could get someone at that, from that, of that status. Right. And transform them, it's only going to help me. Right. Right. So I see your comments, bro. You're like eight, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 comments on your post. I'm assuming you probably get thousands of DMs as well. Yeah. You know, I get hundreds, hundreds of DMs a day and you have about three times my following. So what are like the common things that people say to you? And what is like, because obviously, you know, people get results. Yeah. But not 100% people get results because, you know, not everybody's built like that. Yeah, some so, people buy the program and they tell me they haven't even started it. Like, they bought it like three months ago. They'll be like, oh, so I bought your program three months ago, but I still haven't started it. Like, yeah. So, like, what, what are the, like, for the people who don't do much, like, one of the common questions you get and the common complaints you get, like, in DMs and comments and stuff like that. So, I get a lot of girls asking me if I know any butt workouts that don't grow their legs. That's, like, <laughs> one of the most common questions. So, pretty questions. much an illusion to make their butt look bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and complaints... I mean, I don't really get a lot of complaints. If anything, it's more like girls telling me like they. Not, can't not necessarily do it. Like, like complaints like about like what you're doing, but complaints about like they're just 
not quality oh, people. The, like they, you know, mm-hmm. like I get a lot of like DMs from people and like, man, you know, I tried this for a week, it didn't work. So then I tried this and then it didn't work. And then uh, this, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, they just don't get it. You know, it's like that type of stuff. Like what type of like failing mindsets? Like I have some people like, hey, what's an easy way to make money without having to do anything? Okay, you know, like that type of stuff. So they'll they'll be like, can I do like these workouts without any um, equipment, and can I just work out like twice a, twice a week, things like that? Really? Or yeah, but other than that, it's like more girls telling me like, oh, is there any workouts that are easy on the knees? Oh, okay. But yeah, it's not really a lot of complaints or anything. Right. And then, so you include like a like a meal prep. Uh, oh yeah, a meal, meal guide. Um, something of. Oh yeah, that's a huge part of why I think a lot of um women go through with my program is because, I mean, if, like regular fitness um trainers, they'll try to like tell them to just eat these foods and not eat anything else. Right. Right. But what I try to teach everyone is eat in moderation. Because if some if there's something that if there's a reason why a lot of people fail on transforming is because they don't want to give up. A lot of the foods they they right. like, you it's know, just too much. They're like, it's not worth it. Like, I don't want to fucking give up pizza. That's right. my favorite food. Right. And what I try to teach everyone is that you could still eat things like that, but you just gotta control yourself. Because when you eat, when you go to McDonald's or just a regular fast food place, you never just get a burger. Right. You always get a combo. Right, right. But what I try to teach people is like, you could eat just a burger and you're gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. It's just that when they get the combo, that's what fucks it up. Soda. That's fries, too many calories. Yeah. <laughs> so a slice of pizza, you don't just get one slice. People get like three. Right. So I, t- I tell them, like, you can still eat things like that, but you have to um, do it in moderation. Eat right. one slice. So my meal program, is like t- it tells them that, and it's like so many foods that people enjoy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have to slide that my way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now in terms of – so now we kind of understand, like, you know, the fitness por- portion of your brand – why it's obviously so successful, why it's obviously, you know, growing at such a fast rate. Let's get, let's dive like a little bit more on like the business side of it for the people that are listening right now. I'm like, Hey, like I might want to do something like that, or I might want to use, you know, some of these skills to, um, you know, build my brand, to build my business. Um, what would you say for people listening right now, if they wanted to start a brand, whether it's a fitness brand, whether it's, you know, just a personal brand, like selling stuff online, like maybe like somebody like myself, but they just want to, you know, they want to sell the services online. They want to get their message out to the world. Um, what would you say like would be the three top things and like give me them in detail that they should probably do to stand out from the crowd and, you know, spread their message and sell their service to the world? Well, one, one thing is they have to get used to speaking on the cap to the camera. Right. Cause, um, I still know there's so many trainers that tell them what to do, but they never do it. They don't want to speak to the camera. So they're not comfortable doing all that. Right. You know, cause so you think, you think showing your face on camera. Yeah. That's the biggest, like, that's, that's, that's important key. today. Yeah. Okay, why, and why do you think that? Um, because people people buy from people they like. Right. You know, so if just say someone else is doing the same thing I'm doing, mm-hmm. but they like me more, they're going to support me. Right. You know, so right. I try to help as much as I can because I'm trying to get, like, I want everybody to learn the most they can from me. Just give as much value as I can. And when they see my personality, they're going to be like, damn, like, I fuck with him. Right, right. You it's know? cool. So, like, if someone's trying to grow their brand, they got to show themselves out there right you know you can't just um record your client doing a workout and have people like oh i want him to train me right like you gotta like teach them things and they gotta know how you are mm-hmm. and then eventually like the biggest thing is once you get comfortable with the camera it worked that's what made the biggest difference was using ads right okay. to get that exposure to okay. sell that product you're trying to sell right and you said you're spending a hefty amount on ads. Do you mind me asking, or you know, how much are you spending right now to grow your brand each month? Okay, so when I first started um, spending on Facebook ads, it was like fifty bucks because right. I didn't know like it work or yeah. Okay. And um and then I came out with this ad, and it was just telling girls what workouts work better than squats, right. and I put in a little bit of money, like a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and I saw it was getting a lot of attention. It's on Facebook, engagement. right? Yeah. Right, okay. And then um, I start. I noticed that it was getting a lot of attention. And people were actually messaging me like about my booty program. Right. So that that's when I'm like, oh damn, I'm gonna spend a little bit more next time. Right. So I put 300, and it started growing, and eventually it got to the point where I was um, putting in a thousand a week, mm-hmm. and I was getting like a ten time return. Oh wow. So I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna start sp- spending more. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I spend at least eight grand a week wow. on ads. Wow. 
Yeah. And so are you running them now just on Facebook or Instagram or? What? Yeah, just on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So Mostly you, on Instagram, though. Okay. So do you, so do you use Facebook, though, to, uh, in the beginning when you first started to, like, grow your Instagram? Yeah. Or do you kind of cross no, promote? No. Um, like, what, 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 um, re- actually, I'll ask this later. I'll let you finish up with the last part. Oh, so. For uh, the third thing. What was for, that? For, the third thing that pe- for people who want to get started uh, to grow, right? Get their message out to the world, sell all the products. So you said first one is being comfortable on camera and showing your face. And second one was ads, right? Yeah. Okay, what was and the then third thing? value. Okay. You got as much value as you can. Right. Like Gary Vee, he always says it, bring value, value, value. Right. And why, why do you think bringing value is so important for people like, in the entrepreneur space? Um, because if you could bring so much value and people learn from you, and they're gonna they're gonna believe what you're saying, right? So like if um just say me like if all, all I did was post transformation pictures, without bringing any value, mm-hmm. people wouldn't really buy as much, you know? Right. Because so what I do is I will give up so many booty workouts out there, and girls will try them, and they're like, damn, this shit, fucking, I felt it in my ass. I'm yeah. gonna try his booty program. Right. If okay. I didn't do that, people wouldn't think the same. Right. So one of the things I always tell people who um, follow me on my social media is like, you know, cause like, yo, Josh, you know, how do I build a brand? How do I, how do I become successful? I, you know, I, I post pictures on Instagram every day. You know, I do this every day. I do this every day. And they're like, but people don't follow me. And I'm like, dude, it's very simple. There's one thing you got to do if you want to build your brand and you want people to buy from you. I was like, all you have to do is change somebody's life. Very simple. Yeah. So you change somebody's life, they will be loyal to your brand forever because why would they not? You know what I mean? And that's... I think that was kind of where I had my breakthrough because I think a lot of people, they see my social media, obviously I'm a kind of a little bit different space and they see the, um, you know, the peacocking on the outside, which is, you know, grabbing all the attention, yeah. you know, the, the crazy stuff, the exotic lifestyle, the girls, the cars, like they just see all of that and they're like, oh dude, there's, you know, another damn Brazilian or another, you know, <laughs> lunatic living playboy Instagram dude. But then they actually like listen and watch my stuff. Like, you know, they watch the stories and I'm out here, you know, giving tips, I'm giving, yeah. I'm giving value, I'm you know, motivating people, inspiring them. And then I'm putting out, you know, podcasts that actually help people make money. And then they're like, oh, shit, like, this is actually, this guy's actually, like, changed my life. Yeah. You know, I just listened to his free content. I just watched his page. And I just decided to start an online business. I just made $5,000. Yeah. Why would I not pay him $1,000? Why would I not pay him $10,000 exactly. to help me make more? You know, because I, I think what it does is it makes, um, like, a connection inside the brain that's, like, like, like a small, the first thing is, like, the small commitment, right? They do something that you say that's free. And they make that's a small commitment they're making, and I think uh, I'm trying to think of the word of the uh, it's one of the like psychological biases. I think it's the conf- confirmation bias. So they make that small commitment, and it's like yes, right, got the results, and then they confirm again with the second commitment, which is buying something to get more results, and like g- good. And then you're selling something more expensive, and like well, I got these results, I got these results, they both made sense. Why would I not go like, yeah. for the third product? You, know? you build that credibility, like oh shit, she knows what he's talking about. Yeah, that's crazy. And the crazy thing is that you like. Just kind of pick this all up, like just on, like on the fly, you know, just yeah. with like trial and error. Yeah, because I didn't, yeah. I didn't really like, like do any like um reading or yeah, like personal development. Yeah, like it was just like shit. I was just trying, like, damn, hopefully this works. Yeah, yeah. The fact that you did all of that, even you know, one, the results in the last year is nuts. But even just still within the last three, four years, I kind of figured that all out. Because mm-hmm. I was like, you know, listening to podcasts, reading books, buying seminars, like. You know, I was fucking reading every goddamn page on Google, like 10 pages deep, every blog on YouTube, you know, every single fucking YouTube video, like just trying to learn, 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 like as much as I possibly can. And then like over time, like things started clicking, I started yeah. getting better. And then like I had like these breakthrough moments where I had these massive months and, you know, these massive uh, momentum inside my business. But it's kind of crazy that you just kind of picked it up on the fly. Yeah. And now I'll listen to like podcasts like, and I'm just like, oh shit, I do all those things. Mm-hmm. Without knowing I was doing them. Yeah, like nobody had to tell me. I just kind of, yeah. just kind of did it. Yeah. So what what platforms are you um, doing? So I see you heavy on Instagram, but and you said you run like a little bit of Facebook ads. Um, but like, what type of content are you putting out there? Um, and then di- like dive it, dive into the content models that you're using. For example, like why do you think you know this type of content is best for this platform? Like, what's your like content strategy? So um, so I'm right now. Like my biggest platform is Instagram. I'm trying to build on my YouTube, mm-hmm. and YouTube and um, in my Instagram are a little different. So my my YouTube, like it's a lot of um, me talking to the viewer. Right. Like okay, if you guys start this, like pretty much preparing them for the transformation. Okay. And like during the workouts, giving them tips and like things they should that are gonna happen during the workout. So it's a lot of like mental training too. Right. So that's how 
my um Instagram and YouTube are different, but they're a little similar. It's right. just like YouTube is a little longer. Right. And how many subs are you at on YouTube now? Right now, I only have like thirty three. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but it's so solid for YouTube. Yeah. I'll tell you what. One of the YouTube actually is a very very profitable like platform. With even without like if you know how to monetize it, even without the um as much followers. So for example, I had a buddy. Um, he hit a million dollars selling a, I think, $500 product on uh, YouTube with 10,000 subscribers in, like, the first couple months. And then he hit, like, $3 million or $4 million over the course of a year building, like, a 40 or 50K subs. That's crazy. Like, just selling, like, a $500 product. And he literally had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> he had no selling skills, no marketing skills, no, like... Like funnels, emails, nothing. Like he just had like kind of how you when you first started yeah. doing it manually. I don't think he was doing it manually, but it's just the most basic, basic, basic you know purchase Running checkout option as possible. YouTube ads, not even YouTube ads, just making videos. But the thing is, he made a video every single day. Oh crap! Never missed a day. So like rolling momentum of you know posting every day and oh yeah, uh, YouTube algorithm was like just putting them yeah. out there like crazy. That's what I try to do on on Instagram. Try to post every day because if you if you just post once a week, the algorithm has it where. Where I think I think it's like if you don't really post that often, people right. aren't gonna see your shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I try to post every day, and I try to keep my engagement going, doing those giveaways. Yeah, I see that. So you get you get tons of likes, you get tons of comments on your posts, and they're probably going in explore page because I don't I never seen fucking fifty sixty thousand dollars or comments on a fucking <laughs> post like that without it. Um, what's your strategies to you know drive that engagement you know um, for those different posts? Okay, so. It really started growing once I started doing the the money giveaways. Money giveaways, really? Yeah. So it's just like leave a comment. It could be about whatever. Right. And it just started growing from there because I right. I would post it every time I saw someone won like the three is it, winners. Is it mainly just the money giveaways, or do you ever do like your actual program giveaways? Or oh yeah, the oh so, um the booty program giveaway that one it gets that that one goes crazy. That that song. <laughs> My last giveaway I had um forty five thousand comments on it for a booty program for a booty program. Wow, <laughs> that's nuts. So, have you ever thought about trans, like transitioning into like a video training? You know, because because what is it? It's just like a PDF, it is, an e-book? Yeah, e-book. What, what is it? It's just an ebook. An ebook. How long? Uh, it's just like uh, so it's like three months. Okay. And each workout has a a video link. Oh, so this showing so you the workout link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. It's, yeah, it's pretty simple, but it it's, it works. <laughs> right. Right. What was the craziest like transformations that you've seen from clients um and like, and like, like in terms of like you know the amount of time and like growth oh i see because I mean, sometimes I see girls on, be doing like different angles you know, yeah so. i see i mean my program like you'll get you'll be surprised but all people a lot of people get like crazy progress in like eight weeks wow yeah like right now i'm um training um one of my clients, she was literally like 85 pounds. Right. And I uh, I put it out on my Instagram, like, I guarantee you I'm going to transform this. Right, right. Because I have so much confidence in my work. So that's why I, that's right. why I did it. Because if I didn't, like, it would, like, I would lose credibility if I put right. that out there that I'm a, I guarantee I'm a transformer and it doesn't happen. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, like, people follow through, like, the whole process. process. Right now she's five months in, but people see the huge difference on her. Yeah. And yeah, especially when you're like showing like you know step by step, by oh, step yeah. by step, instead of just like hey here's day one, and then a few months later like yeah. you know, like this is where she's at now. Yeah, I was but, doing like, like all right, this is one week, three weeks. Yeah, so just showing the journey. Yeah, so that's something too I, I experienced with my brand, which people like the most. It's like a lot of people when it comes to building a brand and a business, they're like, well, I'm not that successful yet, so like I don't want to share my story, or I don't want to put it out there. And I'm like, dude, like that, like the reason people follow people like us. It's not because we're super uh, successful. It's because we share, we're sharing our story. And the reason people relate, the reason people like us, the reason people um, want to buy products from us is because they are able to actually see step by step the journey, the growth, and like the progression. So even with like with my brand, dude, I started posting you know my entrepreneur journey like two and a half, three years ago, back when I was driving a truck, back when I was uh, you know just finished you know school and I was in college, I was living in a shitty fucking uh, uh, what's it called um, dorm room. I lived there with Three other guys that I didn't know, I met them on like this random like college roommate website, <laughs> and they were like the dirtiest, like nastiest roommates ever. Like no disrespect to them, but like, the house was like a shithole, yeah. you know. And um, they're throwing crazy frat rager parties there like every fucking day. There's like four, like probably like four hundred beer cans outside, just like laying there on the patio. And it was just like I, I didn't show that too much, but I showed like, hey man, that's where I'm at right now. You know, I'm in college. 
I, and then I show myself, you know, going to Starbucks, you know, I ain't got no Wi-Fi in my house, so I'm here at Starbucks, you know, I'm grinding, you know, and I'm putting in this work. And then people, like, saw the level up. They saw me, uh, you know, from there, you know, uh, get a BMW, and then move out on my own, and then, like, you know, start traveling, and then you start, and I post, like, screenshots of, um, back then, I don't do it as much now, uh, just because, like, I don't want to be, like, uh, what's it called, uh, a threat to myself. Yeah. But I, was, I literally show people me making, you know, 20 bucks a day, and then a few months later, it was like, you know, I'm making 80 bucks a day. And then it was, I'm making 700 bucks a day, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. And then my biggest day, yeah. I did half a million in a month. And I, put, I made a YouTube video for that just because that's a, that's a big milestone. Yeah. And people, like, uh, some of the guys are like, yo, I follow you for three years. What the fuck? Like, and I'm still doing the same damn thing. Like, it's, it's time for me to fucking take action. You know, it's uh, showing that journey, I think, is a lot more inspiring and relatable because they're like, this is real. Yeah. You know, this is not fake. You know? Exactly, they relate. That's why you want to show like where you started. Right, right. That's honestly just like mind blowing to me. <laughs> yeah, how you're doing? Five hundred k in one day. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, webinar. <laughs> the webinars are that's, that's where the money's at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back in terms of, like so with like business and stuff like that, you know, building the brand, doing that, and you said you you're posting stuff every single day. So are you? Like still doing everything like manually, building the team. Like I mean, now you, I'm like, doing what's your less. Kinda, like what's your kind of daily like process? Like I'm, how does that go? I'm still trying to work on like having other people do things for me because I've for four years, five years almost. Right. Like I'm you. I'm so used to having control of everything. You right. know, like even the the girl I'm training right now. Like there's times where I take her food because since I put it out there that I'm gonna transform her. Like I want to have full control. Like yeah, or I'm gonna make sure this shit happens. Like, right. I'm going to train her. I'm going to take her food so I make sure she eats. Because right. that was the biggest thing. She has to eat. Right. She was 85 pounds. So, like, right now with the business thing, like, I'm still trying to, like, get used to letting other people do things for me. Right. Because for so long, I was used to, like, doing everything. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of almost, like, hard to let go. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you're going to do it right. Like, yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Like, no, I, I, I relate, bro. Because <laughs> for me, so you see a lot of these dudes with massive brands, like us, and a lot of people go, Oh, they probably have a full team. Yeah. They probably had a lot of money. They probably, you know, they don't really have to do anything. They just have to go on social media and make yeah. a post. And it's like, for some of the big guys, it's like that. You know, you're talking about you know, Gary V, Ty. These dudes are, before they even went on social media, they're fucking multimillionaires. So it was very easy and simple for them to dump a bunch of money into a team. And their team is like, you know, the, the best people, the highest quality people, the, you know, with the best skills to go and put together something for them. And they don't have to really do much work. Yeah. But for people who, from like us, who started from nothing, you know, started you with, do you know, all. yeah, started with less than a you know, hundred bucks on our bank account, right? To go and grow and build and do this all on your own, where it's like becomes everything you're used to. But then it gets to the point where it's like you can't grow anymore on your own, yeah. doing everything on your own. So you have to like find and like give people that trust or train people or whatever you got to do to, you know, let them take over so you can scale and like leverage that with your business. Yeah. And I'm still trying to like figure that out. A yeah. Bit. So what what's the next step then that you're that you're trying to do like with that? Well, like figuring I'm, it out like like what do you think that you need to get to that next level? Pretty much what you're doing what you're doing hire a video team. Okay, yeah, the video yeah. team. And because right now you're just, you're just vlogging, right? Right, yeah. Right now I use I just use my phone. Really? For everything. And then are you, are you editing the video soon? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I hear yeah, kind of so six, seven I, I edit through all this little phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, like right now I have um, one of my friends. He um, he edits my. He like does those like you know those titles on top of a video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He'll do that for me. Okay. But everything else I've done. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, one of the probably one of the most um, what's the word I want to use like confirming actions that I see you do that like that confirms I'm like yeah this is why you're successful I think is the fact that how consistent you are. Yeah. Like every time I'm on Instagram, every single day, boom, I see you. You know, boom, this is a transformation. Boom, like, hey, this is a person I've been training. Boom, like, I'm doing this giveaway. Like, every single goddamn day. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen you like and that's what I'm, And that's what I'm saying. Like, there's days where I don't even want to post, bro. Yeah. And then, like, if you see my captions, they're so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I get lazy, but I'm just like, nah, I got to I gotta keep doing it. Because right. the, the caption also is, like, a reason why people follow me. Because they, they, people read captions, bro. Like, oh, for sure. If they go on your page, they're going to read captions. There's girls that DM me like, oh, I just spent an hour on your page. Really? Yeah. And, like, that's when I know, like, people, they go all the way down there reading each caption, learning right. as much as they can. And then that's how, that's how my followers are going up because they, they learn so much. Right. Where they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to follow this I guy. I could be dumb not to follow this guy. Yeah. Right. So, um, so that's another thing. That's, like, part of the grind that people don't understand is, like, posting. Right. That's part of it. Right. So 
obviously, like consistency is one of the biggest things. You know, doing it when you don't feel like it, that's you know helped with the growth to your business. Yeah. But what was the biggest like hiccups, hurdles, like like when shit hit the fan with your business, and how, like how did you solve those problems? Um, it would have to be when I was um training in person when in I person? was thinking of like just quitting and like working again for someone. Right. Um. Because when it comes to training, like, there's so many trainers, right? Mm. And or I grew up, I couldn't really charge people a lot of money. Like, I had to, if I wanted to make a lot of money charging people one-on-one, -on -one, I had to go with higher older people, um, train older clients. Right, right. But older when I did like that, that, I didn't like it. Right. Because you have to, like, just, it's kind of like you're babysitting them. Like, oh, I right. got to make sure they don't break their ankle or something. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And I like training um, younger people because I could transform them. Right. And I could push them. So, but they didn't pay a lot of money yeah and there was a point where i don't have that much money yeah you know and there was a point where i only had like three clients and i was like fuck like and i was already on year three. Oh shit and so you're right you lost clients yeah mm -hmm. but i was still doing the same shit mm -hmm. like grinding and all that and i was like okay i think i'm gonna fucking call it quits but then right. i was just like no nah, i can't so i just i went even harder with marketing Right. Like just finding different ways. And then I signed up. That's when I, that's the same year that I joined the gym. Wow. And then it went from there. That's just like blows my mind. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was just last year in fucking yeah. August. Especially the fact that you have like that you're selling like, you know, a $50 product and it's, you know, oh. going that crazy doing yeah. these type of numbers. But it makes sense, you know, because when something works, people are going to buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like. If it didn't fucking work, and if it was a bunch of bullshit that you just found on, uh, on Google and put together and, you know, resold someone else's shit, then, you know, you wouldn't have these transformations. You wouldn't have these, you know, success stories, and, you know, you wouldn't be having this massive growth that you're having. Is there anybody else in this space that's, like, kind of uh, doing anything similar to you? Um, I know there's a lot of people trying to now. Right. Like, they put themselves, like, number one booty trainer. <laughs> try to copy everything I'm doing. Captions. Like, I yeah. see them, like, dude, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. It's not, it's not um, unique. Yeah, so and right, I know there was a there's a trainer that has been working with glutes right. for the longest time, um, but he didn't he he wasn't he didn't take it to the point where I'm doing it where I'm like transforming people all the time. Right. Yeah, but other than that, like, there's not a it's gonna go out there. Once I posted my Audi R8, a picture of my Audi R8, yeah. that's when people were like, "Oh fuck, I, I gotta do what he's doing." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. It put me on the map pretty yeah, much. That's, that's actually smart. I think cars are one of the, actually the best personal brand marketing moves you, you could possibly do. Like, you know, today everyone's like, exotic cars are yeah. you know, a waste of money. You know, it's, it's a depreciating, yeah. uh, you know, liability, blah, 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 blah. You need to, you know, build assets. And I'm like, well, when you bring a person a brand, your car is an asset. Because, like, as sad as it is, like, people are attracted to flashy things. Yeah. You know? So, like, if you're just flexing all the time, then that's not going to do anything if you're not providing any value. But people are attracted to the flashy things. Like, they see something nice, they look, and they want to find out more. And then if you're backing it up with value and results and, you know, actual, like, you know, success, then, it like, I think it uh, makes a connection between like, the subconscious and conscious mind. That, hey, like, this actually makes sense. Yeah. This is actually real. This is actually something I can do. So let me actually look into it. Let me actually follow. Let me, you know, be inspired instead of because you know you see a lot of people with nice cars all the time and it's just like, eh, whatever. Probably just some rich dude or you know, probably yeah. some guy that got you know money inherited from his parents. But then when you see like the car, the social media, the results, you know, like the proof is in the pudding. It's like you can't fake this shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. No, it felt good because like growing up like Mexican, like you don't even think of like that you're gonna get to this point. So right. now I'm pulling up with my R8. Fucking like Newport Beach. Yeah. They see a Mexican dude popping out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, dude. People for sure, though, like, I can't, I'm just imagining, too, if your family knew all this stuff, you know, they knew all the background info, all the finances, oh, yeah. they're probably like, what the hell? You know, <laughs> Where's my car? Yeah, like, did our son get blessed by God or what? <laughs> you know, sent them a little, you know, bag of cash or something, or see, is my, is my son a drug dealer? Is he working with the cartel? <laughs> That's crazy. I think that's especially too when a lot of people see young people with flashy shit. I think they look at us like, oh, they're probably like fucking drug dealers or something yeah, like that. Exactly. They're hopping out flashy cars. Tatted out. Yeah, tatted. <laughs> but it's like it's crazy because like you know you don't even see like like 
doctors driving these yeah. cars. Like some of them do, like you know, the really wealthy ones. But even a lot of doctors can't even afford these type of cars, or they can't even afford to. Like they can't even afford to do like what you're doing, giving out money and flying people out. You know, they, they're stacked up with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. Um, you know, and they have to work 10, 12 hours a day, you know, do five hours of charts and do you know, tons of different meetings. And, you know, it's just like so crazy that in today's world, how much opportunity there is online. Yeah. Just leveraging social media. Like it's nuts. And just with yourself, like you, you're your own brand. Yeah. Yeah, like you could just make money being yourself. Yeah, like that was not even possible like ten years ago, unless like you're like a celebrity or an actor, you know. But like you, literally, you can just make money being yourself. You don't got to be some certain profession. Like yeah. you are your profession. That's just be, nuts. just be good at what you're doing, and it's gonna happen. Right. Like trainers, like nobody sees a trainer like making seven figures. Yeah, that's like nobody ma- nobody becomes a trainer to make seven figures. Yeah, you know, like it doesn't get cross their mind at all. <laughs> um. So what do you say? We'll wrap it up. We won't make this too long. Um, but for everybody on here right now, you know, listening to this podcast, we went over a ton of different like value bombs. You know, we talked about how you went from rags to riches, make, not making any money to seven figures an entire year. We talked about your story. Your parents came, you know, where they came from, you know, they didn't even expect you to do any of this. So I feel like, and you didn't go to, you didn't go to school. You didn't go to college. You were doing drugs. You know, you were all over the place. You had, you had no idea what you can do with your life. I feel like a lot of people are like that right now. You know, like 18, 19, 20, even 25, you know, stuck. They have no idea what to do. What would you say you would do if you know, you had to go back? You know, if these if you had to give advice to these people, what would be that story? I would just say try everything you can. Right. And stick to something for a good amount of time if you believe that you're good at it. Right. And just stay optimistic. Optimistic is you got to stay optimistic for everything because if, if it doesn't work, you don't want to just quit. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to. Stick to it and be like, okay, if it doesn't, if this didn't work, I'm gonna try it, try it this way. Right. You know, and you just gotta stay optimistic. Right. So I like what you said right there because that's one of the things I do. I call it uh, like working backwards or like reverse engineering. So like when you stay optimistic and you know it's like possible, instead of it not working and you give up, you just like try a different way. Yeah. So like I tell people like uh, like reverse engineer. I'm like think in your mind right now exactly where you want to be. Like think of that exact spot and then reverse engineer backwards to get there so like for example if you had to go like think of, uh if, you, if i had to reverse engineer you you'd be like you know being a personal trainer you know super famous online making seven figures how do you get there i'd be like well he would have to have if he wants to make seven figures he have to have a lot of followers well reverse engineer how does he get a lot of followers well he probably needs to post really intriguing content and run some sort of promotion Okay, well, how do you do that? Like, what platform does it need to be on? Well, probably Instagram and YouTube is the best platform. You know, well, how, how do, you know, people find them? How do people relate with them? How do people trust them? Well, he needs to put out, like, this type of content and be consistent every single day. And I keep reverse engineering, you know, and, and reverse engineer again. Like, why would people follow him in the first place? Well, he has, re- he has results, you know, and people trust him. You know, people, and so why would people buy his stuff? Because people trust him. So you kind of reverse engineer all the way back from where you want to be to where you currently are. And that gives you a roadmap on how to get there. So then when you follow that roadmap, you know, uh, the actual way, you know, from starting from the bottom, when something doesn't work, you just have to think back, well, maybe it's, it was a different step. Maybe that wasn't the step. You know? yeah. Maybe I should reverse engineer and, and went, you know, left instead of right. And so I think when people do that um, and it worked that way, like you said, they're less likely to give up. They're less likely to quit. And they're less likely to have this mental barrier that's like, hey, I don't know if it's for me. You know, I don't know if I can do this. You know? And I think you just like, just the funny thing is like, and still still mind blown by it is you just did it, you know? And you got you to gotta stay patient. Yeah. Because you know, if you do it one day, you're not going to re- get results right away. You got to do it again the next day and just stay consistent. Right. That's it. Right. So actually, uh, one last thing. <laughs> I want to use this, this this video clip right here for the Instagram preview. I want me to tell you, or I want you to tell the audience, just in general, the craziest story that's ever happened to you in your life. Craziest, most interesting story that ever happened to you. Oh, fuck. Let, let them know a little bit of something that nobody knows about you. Craziest story. Anything. Anything. Is there anything somebody like that people don't know about you that if they knew who they'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> um I think it was the week after I um bought my Audi. I was driving down um by seven eleven and you know how there's a lot of homeless people? Right. And I'm just looking at them, I'm just like, fuck, like I, I kind of feel bad. Like, I'm fucking here in a fucking nice-ass fucking expensive-ass car. Right. And this dude is just, like, sitting in there with no fucking food. Right. 
So I went in there and I just bought him a bunch of, I bought him like a hundred dollars worth of fucking food. Right. And I just gave it to him. You know what's funny about the one core thing that I realized in this entire podcast <laughs> is every single story, every single thing you told me is all about just contributing, 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 giving value, helping, 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 helping. I like that. That's cool. That's what's yeah, up. That's all my parents brought me up pretty much. Yeah. And that's why you obviously have results. You know, I think a lot of people that get caught up and they're like, and, and you know, all about them, all about, you know, how can I get mine? How can I win? Not how can I help him win? How can I help her win? And because of that, they don't ever win. You know, I tell people, I'm like, you know, you you get what you like give out pretty much. You know, you receive what you give out. So like, if you're not worthy, uh, you have to be worthy of success. You know, and you're not worthy if you're selfish. You're not worthy if you're all about you because like the world is not enough. It's not a crazy enough place where it rewards people for not like you know deserving it. You know, and I think you know you've done more than enough to deserve you know where you're going, and you're gonna. That's why you're gonna keep growing at an exponential exponential rate. And that's uh that's some good stuff, bro. I like that. You're probably one of the first few people that we brought on here that that was like like a really core principle that stayed the same throughout the entire podcast, no matter what question I asked you. So I like that. Um, so with that said, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, that this is the man, the myth, the legend. The big booty king, <laughs> King Anthony Fitness on here. We had him on here. Um, tell the viewers right now that are listening where they can find you on social media. So Instagram, King Anthony Fitness. Um, Facebook, King Anthony Fitness. And Snapchat, King Anthony 11. King Anthony. What about the YouTube channel? King Anthony. King Anthony. So yeah. if you guys are watching this right now, thank you for tuning in to the Dropout Degree. I want you guys to leave a review on iTunes. Um, and let us know what you think. You know, did you join this podcast? And then drop a comment on uh, his Instagram at King Anthony Fitness. Say uh, Jet Set Fly sent me, <laughs> and say what you liked about this podcast. Or if you're coming from his Instagram and you're uh, doing that, go to my podcast or my page, Jet Set Fly, and say King Anthony Fitness sent me, and say something that you got a value from uh, his podcast. That way we can kind of figure it out, see what people liked, see what people enjoy from this podcast. Um, this will be a YouTube video as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys had a good time. Um, I'm glad I got to know you a little bit more. Yeah, and, same here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to see you know your true um, vision, your purpose, and why you do what you do. It's fucking amazing. Thanks, bro. So with that said, brother, me. see you soon.